Have you ever thought about how one flare from the sun can mess with our lives here on Earth? Like seriously disrupt things we depend on, planes, radios, even GPS? Well, that's exactly what happened on May 14th, 2025, when the sun decided to throw a tantrum. This wasn't just some average flare. We're talking about an X2.7 class solar flare, the most powerful flare we've seen this year. It came out of a highly active sunspot region called AR4087, and boy, did it make itself known. Radio signals across Europe, Asia, and the Middle East just vanished, gone. High-frequency communication systems, especially those used by pilots, ships, and emergency services, were completely knocked out for hours. But let's back up a bit. What even is a solar flare? Imagine the sun suddenly releasing a massive burst of energy, like it's sneezing photons and charged particles into space at the speed of light. These flares happen when twisted magnetic fields in sunspots snap and release their energy all at once. The most powerful ones are categorized as X-class flares, and the number that follows tells us how intense it is. So an X2.7 flare is no joke. It's 2.7 times stronger than a base-level X1 flare, which is already considered extreme. Now, the sunspot that caused this AR4087 had been acting up for days. On May 13th, it unleashed an X1.2 flare, and then again on May 14th, it belted out an M5.3 class flare before topping it off with this X2.7 monster. And unlike most high-energy events that fizzle out without a fuss, this one had immediate and visible consequences. The flare's energy hit Earth in under 10 minutes. That's how fast electromagnetic radiation travels. And when it arrived, it slammed into the D-layer of our ionosphere, an invisible part of our upper atmosphere that plays a crucial role in bouncing radio waves around the globe. The result? Blackouts in the high-frequency radio spectrum, especially on the daylight side of Earth. Communication systems went haywire, especially in areas directly exposed to the sun at the time. Think Europe, the Middle East, large parts of Asia. Pilots flying long routes suddenly lost their HF radio contact with control towers. Maritime vessels couldn't communicate effectively. Even amateur radio operators were stunned as their channels went dead. It wasn't just a blip, it was a total radio blackout in some frequencies, lasting for hours. And here's the thing, this event didn't even include a coronal mass ejection, or CME. That's the part that usually causes the real chaos, like geomagnetic storms, GPS disruptions, and even power grid failures. But experts quickly pointed out that AR-4087 still looked dangerously active, meaning a CME could follow soon. If that happens, we might be in for another round of trouble. We've already seen how bad it can get. Just last year, Sunspot AR-3664 blasted out an X8.7 class flare, one of the biggest in decades. That one did send a CME toward Earth, sparking a G5 geomagnetic storm, the highest category there is. It painted the skies with auroras that stretched all the way down to southern Europe and the southern U.S., but it also messed up navigation systems and forced airlines to reroute transatlantic flights. And guess what? We're not even at solar maximum yet. The sun follows an 11-year cycle, and we're now in solar cycle 25, which is expected to peak at the end of 2025. This means more intense, more frequent solar activity is coming. Satellites are vulnerable. Power grids are vulnerable. Even astronauts on the International Space Station are at risk from high doses of radiation if they're caught outside during one of these events. It's not about doomsday scenarios. It's about being aware and prepared. Space weather can no longer be brushed off as a niche science topic. It directly affects our daily lives, whether we realize it or not. So, the May 14th flare wasn't just a flash in the sky. It was a flashing red warning sign. A reminder that while we may have mastered technology here on Earth, we're still dancing to the beat of a fiery star 93 million miles away. And when that star gets cranky, we all feel it.